Fortnite pranksters. That's how we're starting this. Okay. Yeah. Wait, what the fuck is this? Why is it like this? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the tutorial. <laughs> if you're here to learn something, hopefully you do. Sorry. It's not true. Sorry. Sucky back Sorry. I just looked back at the screen and... <laughs> Dave's camera was doing the boomer thing. Where it's just like, gr Grandpa, tilt the camera up. <laughs> Pretty much. Tilt the camera up. <laughs> so yeah, today, it was like that. Uh, we are talking about space and games, specifically our favorite space game. No, it is not uh, New No Man's Sky. It's from far before that, and it's far superior. In many ways, I feel like it's it's one of these games that a lot of games chase trying to be as good as, but it just isn't. And also, and the name of that game, game uh, is Freelancer. Which apparently, like it doesn't get. Uh, I feel like Freelancer doesn't get the recognition that it deserves. No, it really doesn't. That's Especially because... when games like No Man's Sky and Star Citizen are basically based off of Freelancer. That's that's because it was developed by Microsoft, so of course it doesn't get recognition. Yeah, that's true too. Nobody gives a shit about Microsoft. To be honest, it was published by Microsoft. It was developed well, by Digital Yeah, it was published by Microsoft, but you know. But it's Microsoft's name that gets shoved on it. Yeah. No, uh, because Digital Anvil comes right after. So, let me take my five minutes to get all the boring shit out of the way, because otherwise Zeta is going to... <laughs> oh, he almost did it. <laughs> yeah, I was Zeta like, you bother. You bother. <laughs> I literally, like, almost did, Look. like, my my mouth was going to say the letter, and then my brain went, nope, stop. Do I need to just like draw a big Zeta on my face every time you look over? That'd you're like, ah, oh, yes. Super helpful, actually. Wow. <laughs> actually no, he's now nah, he's gonna he's gonna actually do it. That's the thing with Zeta. You tell him something like that. You tell him something like that, and it'll happen. I wish we recorded the video just so people could see these reactions. So I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go full Amaranth Twitch and I'm start just, drawing things on my face. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna narrate this as it happens because they can't see the cameras. But uh yeah okay, so right so. now he appears to be I don't know on his phone or something. Yeah, I'm um, looking up what a Zeta he's... looks like to make sure I get it correctly. Okay he's looking up what a Zeta <laughs> oh, he, oh he's going for he's he's going for he's legitimately going for the I, I uh Symbol the of Zeta, Zeta symbol, yeah, like the Greek letter Zeta, uh, which yeah, I is I don't know that symbol. Uh, well, it is a clever. Uh, it's it's a very clever thing to do. It's a clever it's also, disguise. It's also not necessarily understood by Dave and his uh, brain. Well, I suppose we'll find out, won't we? His brain is more s shoved full of historical facts from World War II and not Greek letters. Yeah, that's history. This well, is if the world would learn from the historical facts of World War Two, I'd have to, I'd be able to stop repeating them. That and oh. the other, he has like he has like three sections of his brain, right? He's got he's like got a a tri split brain, and one section is World War Two trivia, one section is Sonic fan fiction trivia, and the third the section other is the Civil War. No, the third section is everything else that his brain has to do in a given day. <laughs> And it is, yes, the Civil War. it is the smallest section of his brain. So trying to throw a Zeta symbol at him will just confuse him. Well, if he knows it, because we've said it so many times now, he's going to see this symbol and just be like, oh, right, Zeta. Even if he doesn't actually know what this symbol means. He's got, Zeta has some sort of roll of tape. I think it's masking tape. I'm not sure. It's masking tape or painter's tape. It's some, sort of, it his... it's some sort yeah, of. I just tape. had the sudden realization that my, my wife will probably not appreciate it if, <laughs> if she wakes up. I just have a big ass Zeta Sharpie on my face. Yeah, she she might not appreciate that so much. Uh, You're like, what the fuck is this? Just to go shopping today. Yeah. yeah so, uh, uh, he has. Point. He has. Oh, he has. He's taped some sort of snake symbol. Onto his oh face. God, that's, that's a, a Zeta, Zeta, you fucking uneducated dumbass. It it looks like some sort of Caduceus, you know maybe. Um, it looks like an S for sin. Kinda. It does kind of well, look like an S. 
Maybe you should look the symbol up because that's what a Zeta looks like. Well, I thought you were what a Zeta looks like. I mean, Zeta, yeah, I said, but um, well, um, it kind of sort of looks like that. And got the best handwriting, okay? It's not some sort of magical seal or anything. This is why I said, this is why I agreed with Dave when he said, you should just put a Z on it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, he's removed. Oh, he's removed the strange snake symbol okay, from his forehead. I'm gonna start talking about the space game, and then. Well, this was game. more interesting. So. Shenanigans. <laughs> he's now got a second piece of paper. He's writing something oh, on it okay. with a sharpie. He's probably gonna it's make a mystery. Big it's a mystery. Edit. What is he doing? What is he doing with that marker? Now he is sniffing the marker. It's not good for your health. <laughs> Don't lie to our, to our viewers. He's he's furiously writing something with, uh, like with, yes, great, furiously. with great fervor. He's tossed the Sharpie now. I, I, I feel this joke has definitely gone on too long. He's got the roll of tape again. He's, he's trying to find the end of the roll of tape. He's looking hard. He's trying to find it. <laughs> He's having a seizure from laughing at my narration. Uh, <laughs> Dave is over here thinking this joke has gone on for too long, and Ringo has completely think, checked out. I think Beard uh, needs to give a little more uh, <laughs> National Geographic flavor to this narration. <laughs> and now, <laughs> this is your new best friend, the crab. You must promise to love him and care for him. Yes. You've got to do you pronounce promise? penguin wrong like do you, fourteen different ways. Do you promise? Okay, we've now put your best friend crab in mortal danger. <laughs> yep. You can't okay. see anything. Though. He's now put. Uh, he's now taped a paper to his head that says the word Zeta, and it also has quotes. Quote Zeta. I don't know how he's gonna do this episode like this, but this should be interesting. I mean, I don't really need a camera. Dave so. is silently screaming. <laughs> I'm yawning, actually. <laughs> I don't know that. Yeah, that's what we said. Because I didn't get any sound at all. I saw was. <laughs> I don't know if the, if the microphone picks any of that up. Because anything that's not me talking, like actual words, just gets <laughs> by the so I can sit here and make. Can you actually ideas. read this, or is this backwards on your screen? I no, can I can read, read it. it. Okay. Can can I get the boring part out of the way then? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. All right. Uh, Freelancer is actually the sequel to a previous yeah, yeah. game called Star Lancer, and uh, we didn't Star learn Lancer this was the right sequel. away. In fact, so, I think uh, we learned this last week. So here's here's the fun fact. There's a cutscene at the beginning of Freelancer, the the intro scene, where it talks about a war in the solar system between the Coalition and the Alliance, and how the Alliance ultimately lost that war, and then they were pushed out of the solar system to the Sirius Sector, and now you're in some other part of space, and that entire intro has nothing to do with the game. Pretty much. And it made no sense why it was there. But it was there because the previous game made by these guys, Star Lancer, was all about that war and how the Alliance lost. The only time, the only other time effort. at all in Freelancer that they mentioned that entire thing is where it's like, oh, here is the ruins of the, uh, the whatever uh, colon colonizer ship that was lost in, in space so many, many years the ago. Hispania, yeah. and, they, and you find those lost ruins at some point. But the then Hispania, that's it. They're just like, the oh, yeah, space. this is the ruins of the Hispania. And that's it. Yeah, that's they don't the really thing. So in the talk they much more five, about that. There's five sleeper ships, and sleeper ships means they put people in cryostasis and set them off into eons away. And the sleeper ships were uh, named each after a country that built them, which was so the Liberty, the, the Britannia, the Liberty, the Britannia, the, the Rhineland, the Kusari, and the Hispania. But when you get to play the game, there are four colonies, Rhineland, Liberty, Britannia, and Kusari, and Hispania just doesn't exist for some reason. 
Um, and then you find out later that it got sabotaged, blown the fuck up, and then uh, the biggest, baddest criminal people came out of that. God damn it, Zeta. You cannot say that on my show. Thank you, Zeta, for giving me more work when I edit this show. <laughs> I, I do want to point out that in the map, the universal map to go look, it they have like sections cleared out for each of them. Liberty is like a clear section in the middle. There's a section in the top that's blue for Kusari, a section on one side that's red for Britannia, a section on one uh, in one area that's green for Rhineland, and there's clearly like a, a turquoise blue green section off to the side meant to be for Hispania, and then. Hispania isn't a thing. Yes, I get it. I will call you by not your real name. I, I'm just saying, I'm just going to leave this out. here for the entire episode. <laughs> your I mean, arm is going to get tired holding that up. Yeah. yeah like a lamp or something thought. you could position it there with. What he, what he needs to do, he's overthinking it. What he needs to do is just get yes, like. Yes, I can totally see it. I'm not looking at your face at all. It does, it's not completely he needs, off he needs to get like a little miniature fishing rod type thing. Ah, oh, there we go. And then just hold on to it and dangle it off the end. Okay, so I need a book, apparently. I mean, everything's <laughs> in my face. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to hand this, and then every time I think you're going to say my name, I'm just going to do this. <laughs> All right. I'm relatively certain this game, which was developed by... Digital Anvil and produced by uh, Microsoft was... Not uh, World Anvil, our sponsor for today. No. Just kidding, Shut up, Zeta. We don't... Sponsor us. <laughs> we don't have any sponsors. No, no, no money for us. Um, no. We're, we're, four, we're four broke kids. Anyway, uh, I believe it was released in 2007. It's a sequel to Star Lancer. I'm pretty sure. It might sure be 2003. 2003. It might be 2003. That's a wide I difference. Remember the, I don't remember off the top of my head. It was 2000 something early. Um, it could be 2000. It could be 2020. I'm not really sure. Uh, and basically, the game is you you play freelancer Edison Trent. And yeah, Mr. Trent, you're back. Mr. Trent. My favorite thing. Is how all these people from various countries have absolutely no accents whatsoever. Oh my god, it's Lord great. Ahakara. Yeah, the only people who have <laughs> accents playing. are the Rhinelanders in the cutscenes, and then the, the and, uh, and the Kusari uh, in the, the cutscenes. Hold on, here's the thing though, in the cutscenes it'll be like, Commander Zen, Mister Trent, they have been waiting for you, and then when they like talk to you at, from a yeah, ship, and then it's like, no, 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 we're not like. We, we're looking for the artifact. We'll we'll help you out if you give us the artifact. No fucking no. See, like that German accent yeah. gone. So like, <laughs> oh the, yeah, come on to sing. In the in the cutscenes, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll be like, uh, oh, Mister Trent, you are in our territory now. But uh, when you exactly it, and and oh, those like people, one... to be fair, those then in the those game, like, they're like those are the important NPCs, and they'll keep their voices. But you go to like the random bar NPCs in Kusari, and they're just like, "Hello, how can I help you today, yeah, like, Mr. Trent?" Mr. Trent, good, great to see you, Mr. Trent. Yeah. Or, or like yeah, when you're actually out in space, and it's like, <clears throat> freelancer Alpha One Dash One, you will submit to a cargo scan. Yeah, and then the criminals, all of whom sound the same, where they're just like, "Yeah, yeah they, all sound like, they all sound like uh, some random dark like elf hell. number two from <laughs> Oblivion." So here's an actual conversation that Trent had with somebody as I was playing earlier today. I went into a battleship bar, and I walk up to this chick, and it's like, "Hi, can I help you? Hey, what you got?" You new here, stranger? Check. Uh -huh. Oh, well, I work for the Liberty Navy. It's like, what we you run this joint. for a second? <laughs> a, no, it's, it's so, like... Oh, yeah, the conversation, it's terrible. It's, it's so obvious that they, like, just cut it and then, like, play... They have one recording of someone saying, it's... the Liberty Navy. 
and then right. that's like <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a, a sentence in that game is not that somebody recorded speaking a sentence it's that somebody strung together a bunch of dot wave files <laughs> and formed a sentence that way oh my favorite thing is how they'll be like mr trent nice to see you or so happy to see you or whatever and then you'll be like hey you got anything for me and they're like Oh, actually, I have heard a rumor going around. And when you're like, well, I'm interested, they're like, fine, I'll tell you. Jeez. Like, they're trying to be fucking Sunderay all of a sudden. Because <laughs> it's the only thing they fucking recorded for that situation. I just want one dude in there who's just like, like, hella Boston. <laughs> oh, I'd be. Dude, that guy <laughs> would be the fan favorite character. He'd just be like, Yo, what's up? What's up, Mr. Trent? Hey, Mr. Trent. What's cracking? Are you talking about King? Because that sounds no, like kind of like King. Uh, you, almost. He's, he's, I guess, supposed to sound like New Jersey, though. I'm just it saying, like, what if you had like a if you had like a Boston or like a New York Maybe guy? Pittsburgh. But this was that was like cool as the original Pittsburgh? <laughs> um, Pittsburgh. My name is but the Gil. main thing, so to get back to the point, the main thing about the game, you fly in a spaceship, you go get bounties, and you run off and do them. You're you're a freelancer. Uh, mm -hmm. You do whatever these people ask you to do. Mr. Generally Trent. speaking, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be uh, like watch over a convoy, or I hate kill those enemies in this sector, or my absolute favorite. Go kill this one specific bad guy who has 3,000 ships around him. Yeah. And then make sure you tractor him in afterwards and bring him back to us while all his friends shoot you to oblivion. I mean, yeah. you were just playing earlier. You and know it's, it's not 3,000 ships. It's, and like it's three. Are you that bad it's, of a pilot? It's, uh, he is. And uh, it's... Oh, this is the Bounty Hunters Guild, and they actually bring like 10 fucking ships and that's actually a problem the other thing about the the bounties, bounties like bounties that is where it's like it's oh, like part of the we, story i'm in mr trent we need you to go hunt down johnson deville <laughs> yeah they're like super randomly generated like oh, ultra man. white person my name. favorite my yeah. favorite one is what it's like <clears throat> like obviously a german group of people that you're supposed to be going after or something, and it's like, it's like uh, we want Hans you to fight. German. Yeah, no, 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 no. no Hans like, we want, German. We want you to go. We want you to go fight. Uh, or we want you to go find Whitney Hassoff. I'm like, that's the most British sounding name I've ever. Yeah, heard. and then yeah. there's the, and then there's, then there's the Kusari where they're like, <laughs> we need you to go hunt down Takanashi John. Oh my god! <laughs> so like, bad. It's like. It's like definitely made by white people. <laughs> yeah, which is probably why it doesn't get the the. Uh, just so we're clear, not that it was made by white people, but that it's very obvious that it was made by white people. It's who didn't it's know hella was. like like nobody this, understood anyone. The, the, the time, honestly. The the gameplay the as far as it. driving ships, piloting ships, going into space battles, and doing cool shit in space is fucking amazing. Any any time you have to be on a planet and interact with people, it fucking sucks. <laughs> it, it's, it's as if you have intelligence level one in Fallout New Vegas. Oh yeah. <laughs> Only at least in New Vegas, those interactions are funny. Yeah. Well, actually, I should say it's like every NPC has intelligence level one, and Trent is just sitting there tolerating these idiots. It's it's less like I'm no smart girl, and it's more like just hello, Mister Trent. I am Joe yeah, could... Joe from the Joe Planet. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's funny bad. you say that because there's actually a planet of like monkeys and a planet. There, of there is. Robots. Yeah, and that's the thing: the monkeys and the robots they sound exactly the same as everyone else. Mister Trent, you're back. Well, normally the robots just sound like robots, but like the planet robot robots. They're tender, uh, yeah. They just sound. Oh, that's like true people. because they do have like the whole, um, standby pattern is full. You will be free to proceed when it's free. 
and there's there's a couple characters that have character, like the one that's played by John Reese Davies, who is obviously Tobias. fantastic. Yeah, Winston Tobias. Yeah, yeah. he's but, also uh, the only Britannian with a British accent. That's not true. Quentin John Reese Davies. Quentin has one as well. Quintain. Quintain, yeah, but yeah, Doctor Quintain. Quintain. Yeah. Yeah, Sinclair. Uh, sure, no. He has not. like a Sean Connery accent. Yeah, and then and then you have and then you have you have fucking Dexter. Dexter the Texan. Dexter come from Texas. He comes straight out of fucking Texas. He, hi, Dexter Holmes. I, 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 I am a I am a citizen Florida. of Britannia. Yeah, I am yeah. as English as English get. God save <laughs> the queen. The queen. <laughs> <laughs> fucking speaks, Dexter. I'm just reminded of. You all owe a personal debit to me of 1,000 Nazi scouts. <laughs> yes, the difference is that uh, Dexter Hovis is... On Jerno. On Jerno. Dexter fucking sucks. Not because he's from Texas. He's got, he's, just because he's an asshole. He fucking sucks. Here's the thing. He's great all the time, except when he decides when you're racing to race him. Him. Except when for when you race him, that sucks. Which, of course... Of course, he's some like big ten gallon hat cigar smoking. Um, I'm Dexter Dimidome. State type <laughs> Dimidome motherfucker. Of course, he wants to race you. you I'll race you in my space horse. I've got a space horse. I got a space Camaro. Fucking Dexter! I hate that guy. <laughs> I love his character. I hate the race with him. That race sucks. He rigs the um, shit out of that race. And then he's like, yeah, I wonder why nobody can ever beat me. I've never found yeah, a, like, a worthy I've challenger. I've had a real challenge. Well, and maybe it's because like, you fucking cheat every time, Dexter, you fucking the, dipshit. The race. When you're beating him, he's like, don't let him win. Shoot him. Kill him. Knock him dead. <laughs> like, what the Turn hell? on the repulsor cannons. Dexter. What the fuck, bro? Also, my least favorite thing as of right now is fucking cruise disruptor missiles. Like, go fuck yourself with that. Uh, you go when you. The worst part about that is when you go on a mission to uh, to like eliminate this one guy, and it's like I just want to go shoot that guy and leave. I don't want to deal with your twenty cronies. Um, Sorry, like I'm very, I'm very distracted by the fact that Zeta sealed a bag of chips with a fucking clothespin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, continue. Well, I, I, I was just doing this earlier. I have a bunch of like assassination missions in a row, and I'm just like, I just want to kill dude, bro, and a jet. I, I'm just trying to get the credits. I don't care about fighting his army. <laughs> Mr. But Trent, please hit, go and kill Gus Johnson. Your, uh, yeah, as soon as you hit your 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 uh, cruise engines, you hear missile incoming, and your cruise engines get instantly shut down. It's like I'm not wanting to fight all of you. My shield can't take that beating. Fuck off. <laughs> now, if you go into the, if you go into, you can edit the text in the settings and uh, make yourself invincible. If you want to play the game the boring way. Well, I mean, I was trying to get the genuine experience. I didn't want to go in and cheat code myself to the victory. Or alternatively, you can go into the same text document and make it twice as hard. You can. <laughs> you you yeah. can do that. You can do that. My spaceship, no matter what spaceship I drive, has one HP. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, please, no. You got to be Unless real good at not getting hit. Which you drive it, heavy I was gonna say, like I'm it'll not. never, it'll you'll never survive the race with Dexter because he goes to a fucking asteroid field for his race, and you will hit an asteroid. Let him win, shoot him, kill him. <laughs> I'm a whiny Britannian man. Kill him. I can't lose. Kill him. Fucking Dexter. So one of the one of the things asteroid. that I like the most about the game, although they really really didn't capitalize on it 
I, I would argue probably because of at the time they probably didn't have the technology or the budget to do so. But space is more than a flat plane. There's a oh, yeah. bunch of space up and down and left and right and in every direction. Yeah. The downside is everything in space is between this point and this point, and going any higher or lower than those two points is pointless. Yeah. That's not entirely accurate. There's a couple um, Omega and Omicron systems where there's jump holes that are way up and down. Really? Huh. I don't recall that. Um, I just got to the point in the game where you, you rescue Sinclair and then you go and uh, the that's, this is the point where I was like, it's weird how they're inconsistent because you meet these two ships from Rhineland who come in and they're like, don't shoot, don't shoot. We want to help you. And they sound like that. They're like, we defected from the Rhineland military. And then when you go to actually face the battleship in the in the fight to come, like five minutes later, Commander Zen, Mr. Trent, they have been waiting for you. All hands abandon ship when they die. <laughs> yeah. Like, why are you now having German accents? <laughs> well, obviously the, the defectors, you know, once they defect, they lose the accent, right? That's how it works. Because they're not Nazis anymore. So <laughs> can we also talk about the fact that Obviously, the Germans are the bad guys because Nazi. Because we still can't get over that. They yes. weren't. They weren't the only Nazis. They weren't the only. Wow. They weren't the only Nazis. Yeah, they weren't the only bad guys. They were the. They were the center, center point of where and, all the bad shit was and, happening. And who was their ally, Dave? Kusari. The Japanese. Yeah, true. That's true. Yeah, it's actually funny because I was so reading all. World I was. I was actually. Space. Yes, it's World War Two <laughs> yeah, in space. Really exactly. It was. It's Britain and America versus Germany and. It, Japan only. And only in this case, it really is run by the Illuminati. Yeah. Oh, God. The funny part of it, about it is, if you look into the lore of the whole Hundred Year War out there, it's basically World War One. What the eighty year because, war between because the. <laughs> Microsoft Publishing is super creative. Oh, let me tell you how creative. You want to know what the leader of Kusari, the Japanese group, is actually named? What's his name? Shogun Ito. Fancy. Wow, how super creative. I mean, on the one hand, it's a nice nod to some actual historical stuff. To, to be fair... Um, I'm going to be 100% honest. Gamers don't give a fuck, so that went over ninety nine percent of people who play that game's head. To be fair, Oda is a, uh, it's a well known. Edo. Right, but that's Edo, what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Oda is another like clan name, like a traditional clan name, and the the guy who writes the uh, Komi Komi San manga, that's his. What that's does Oda his... have to do with anything? It's a traditional. Clan name like Ido. <laughs> Ido is a period in Japan. No, that's Ido is. Well, Ido, yeah, that's E D O. It's the I'm same thing. Sure e D O is pronounced Ido in Japanese, but okay. It is I, a. It is a. It, the Edo it is a. It is a period of time. It is a clan name, and it is a uh, city name in Japan. Are you uh, unironically attempting to convince the other members of this uh, podcast and all of our listens, listeners that it is pronounced Edo? I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Edo. Well, you're wrong. Mm. It's, it's the Edo period. The other reason I know this that I can just throw on to the legitimacy of the arguments from the others is I have a theater degree. And a lot of early theater came out of early Japan, 
And when you think of early Japan, what do you think of? The Edo period. So yeah, we had to learn a lot about the Edo period. Yeah, it's, it's just like uh, it's just like that classic uh, anime, Battle Angel Alita. Yeah. <laughs> Battle Angel Attila, the the Battle Angel. Battle Angel yeah. Attila. Mm-hmm. Somewhat off topic for some reason. I remember I was thinking like <laughs> Because I was hearing somebody trying to give a review on the Sonic movie, and uh, I was you what? Good, go watch it. That's I, I was, I, I was like, I was like, what are we gonna do with this? We just gonna come up with like Alita characters, except we're gonna make them little animals. <laughs> My name's Hedgehog the Sonic. Oh no! Like, had he literally never heard of anime, anime like faces, but made. And CGI and real life looking, I it just looked really ugly and weird in Alita, in my opinion. I was just like, why is it every other human being has normal eyes, but this one has eyes that are the size of their head? Well, like, well, see, because, because she's a she's a, owl, a well, you see, it's because she's a it's because she's a uh, she's an android or a cyborg or whatever. So that there's not her original real eyes. It's just those are her. Her cyborg eyes. She has special her, uh, eyes. Her <laughs> yes. designer was like the biggest of weebs. <laughs> These are designer eyes. I'm just whoever designed that shit. Cat has entered weebs. the camera. He wants your whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> it's not whiskey, it's tea. It's tea. Yes, whisk tea. At fucking 10 in the morning. <laughs> Hey, I just got off of work, dude. I could drink whiskey if I wanted to. Okay. Yeah, well, we don't have whiskey, so good luck. I do have beer, though. Cat butt. You're pointing your little cat butthole at the camera. <laughs> well, what's what's your take, uh, Ringo? You, uh, you're you're quiet. You're usually quiet. Like we my, talk my about everything, up. and you just kind of like Same. sit in the background and go. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most of the time. Say uh, something. Talk about the game. Talk about. Say your something. Hold on, I'm trying to fucking. There you go. Be part okay. of the conversation, yo. Uh, things keep falling, man. Hold on. <laughs> things keep falling, just like my life. Is deep. This cat. <laughs> Gato. Anyway, um, I really don't know nearly as much about Freelancer as you guys do because, you know, I was like eight years old when I first played it. So, you know, the experience wasn't the same and I never got very far in the game. And I was like, I thought when I was a little kid, I thought that the combat was really difficult, but it, it's really not. Um, coming back to it now, though, as an adult, uh, it's still fun. Which is a good thing. Like, it's actually still good. Like, I mean, it's not good, like, in terms of the fucking dialogue, but everything else is fine. Mr. Trent, you're back. What about it, my back? Mr. Trent, uh, you're a front. Anyway. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Trent, you're an affront to all of humanity. <laughs> good to know. Thanks. I'll keep that yeah, one. Yeah, that's the other thing. <laughs> His responses to shit. It's just like the same vibe. <laughs> or or he'll time. be like, Mr. Trent, you're an affront to all of humanity. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> my friend was asked to join the order. Could prove useful later. Thanks. <laughs> The Order, by the way, for those who have never heard of this game, oh they make it God. sound like The Order is like Space Al Qaeda. I'm just, so I'm just trying the the to. Uh, they're just the Secret Service. I'm just trying to imagine, like, imagine, imagine using those like five lines fucking everywhere, right? Like you go to the grocery store. Hi, how's your day going? Good to know. Thanks. Check. <laughs> Misty. <laughs> like. Oh, like when you're that'll to be people. that'll that'll right, be that'll be a hundred and eight dollars. I'll keep that in so mind. That could be Thanks. Seventy like fifth time in the same station, and you finally meet the you talk to the one dude you haven't yet, and they're like, "Is this your first time?" Yeah. 
It's my first time. <laughs> yeah, then there's that. Yeah, and the is mechanics. Here? The mechanics. Oh my god. Oh. Well, can we also talk about how you start the game with like 2,000 credits and you immediately go to Pittsburgh and immediately someone in Pittsburgh is like, I could fix your rep for like 80,000 credits. Like, Bro, I have that kind of money. Yeah, it's like, what makes you... What? what? You just got out of the like, hey, seven survivor hey, to hey, hey, King, I uh, can I borrow... Money. King, can I borrow some cash, bro? Goodbye. Like, a lot Goodbye. of cash. Good for it, I promise. Goodbye. Sam Lon again. One million credits. Sam Lon. Is that like the only guy who had, like, that's the only, like, minor villain that actually had a character? I mean, I wouldn't call, call him a villain, really. But... I know. He was a fellow Freeport 7 survivor. I saw something. Now they want me dead. There were ships that were there, but they weren't there. And he's like, you're not making any sense. And he's like, <laughs> Don't try to uh, follow me, been... Frank. Yeah, then he comes back to you and like, shoves a gun in your head and is like, you should get out of liberty. But don't follow me. And then literally, yeah. like five minutes later, they're like, Oh, we, we caught the leader of the order. It was Sam Lonigan. Yeah. And Previously known as... Nobody, Orlando. nobody, nobody believed that shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nobody who knew Sam Lonigan. Right? Yeah, in the game, they... Trent's like, he wasn't smart enough to be a terrorist, let alone lead them. And it's like, yeah, I mean, he seemed pretty sketchy. <laughs> yeah, he didn't seem like... Yeah. By the way, he's just like a paranoid, like Trent. Whatever the hell he is. Trent is a fantastic character when he's not using canned dialogue. He is. Like and the cutscenes is pretty good. Like right at the beginning of the game, right? So like he's fr he was on this place called Freeport Seven, which gets blown to fucking smithereens, and he's one of the few survivors oh, that survived in like an escape pod. And you get a real good grip of his character really quickly because they they bring out a stretcher for like the one super injured dude, which I think may, might have been Sam Lonigan. Sam Lonigan, yeah. Yeah. Lonigan. And and his 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 Lonnie boy his thing that he says to the doctors is. Keep him alive, or make sure he stays alive. He owes me some owes credits. Me money, credits. Yeah. Your concern is touching. Yeah. Your concern so you, is touching. So right away, right away, you're like, oh, this is a fucking Han Solo right here. This guy. He's a fucking... Yeah, and then he goes into the bar, and he's like, give me a Sidewinder fang. It's like... Yeah. Why do we have to make up drink? Yeah. He says some cool shit. What kind of alcohol? No, but not Liberty Ale. Also, I, yeah, oh, Liberty, yeah, Liberty Ale. Yeah. yeah, I gotta say, also, and this this is a trend in this game, that bartender is, again, the only bartender that has character, because it's the first one you meet. Yeah, you also notice that, like, all the characters that have character, um, that aren't main characters, that are, like, people you run into, why are they all fat? Lord, Lord Hakura is skinny as fuck, bro. That's true. Yeah, well, that's, that's true. true. Lord Hakka is, and the the other guy, who's and, the, and the Rhineland guy that you meet later. Who's like <laughs> oh, I can see the future. He's like no, he's, <laughs> Mr. Built Muscle Military. Yeah, man. he's not fat, but he's. I big. could see him being. I could see him being voiced by Paul Wahlberg. Paul, what? What? That's not the name of the actor. I fucked that up. No, yeah, you like mix two different actors he, there. He he walks out and you're like, "Hello, everybody. My name is Markiplier." Mark, it's Mark Wahlberg, dumbass. Mark Wahlberg. That's the right one. The guy, plays, the guy who plays Kronk. Oh, Patrick Warburton. Patrick Warburton. Patrick Warburton. That's who I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. First yeah. The Paul Wahlberg. <laughs> Paul, Paul Wahlberg. That's one. That's one of those hey, names of. Live that down. That's one of those I'm names of one of those criminal bosses you have to go hunt down. <laughs> yeah. Please go. Please go capture Paul Wahlberg. He's a dangerous man. Ever since he got his hands on insert commodity here, and it's all like 
heavy water. <laughs> yeah, he's a dangerous man ever since he got his hands on dehydrated water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro, one of my favorite things is like he's uh, making a killing game, off of it. Like the first three guys I hunted down, it was like, it was like, hey, this random criminal organization that that's literally like, just so we're clear, this is, we're talking about the literally rogues, which are the least like serious criminal organization. Yeah, like they're just pirates. They're, they're not like they're not like so like the outcasts are like an actual clan of people who are yeah, trying outcast to and the corsairs all both the mm -hmm. all across the colonies the liberty rogues only operate in liberty and they're not so much an organization as it's just a group of various criminals that it's, were just, it's like, just like thugs, well, basically. it's we, just like we, a group of it's just like a group of together, peaceful protesters that, that wanted to tour the white house Cringe, you made it political. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not wrong, though. That's basically what they are. Yeah, as far yeah. as, like, factual yeah, information, as far as how these here. protests have gone over the last year, yeah, that's basically the Liberty Rogues. So Only they don't have just, some, like, noble cause that they're trying to aspire to. They're just burning them. The point I'm trying to say is these stuff. guys are not, like, a legitimate criminal organization with actual like heads of an organization that would be trying to get their hands on something it's just the delinquent or... squad yeah they're well, basically yeah, just the, the, the delinquents they're, However, they're just gangsters. the first three missions i get are all against them they're all assassination missions and the thing that all three guys stole was super secret battleship specs oh, so they were trying to become okay. Experimental battleship specs, and I was like, "Why? Just, just like, you could have had the oh. outcast do that. I believe you. You could have had the corsairs do that. I believe you. You could have had the Xenos or the Gaians or the Mollies do that. I'd believe all of that. I would never believe it for the Rogues. <laughs> I no I no I thing. would no I would believe it. I would believe it, and I'll tell you why. I feel like the way to spin that is less that they went and stole." Uh, high tech battleship plans, and more that they like blew something up and found them. Yeah, and, and they're, they're just like, like oh, oh we're gonna, we're look gonna at these. They're, not even, like a big cool they're ship. not even smart enough to bring it home and be like, yo, we could build badass battleship. They're like, well, let's like, go sell uh, this on the black who market. To, who wants to buy it? Who wants to buy it? <laughs> yeah, they that's, don't care. That's exactly the type of people they are. They, you they gotta make money. They wouldn't bother trying to make their own shit. There's way too much ginger. It's, it's funny because they make their own fighter ships, but they don't make anything else. The Bloodhounds? No, they buy those from the Mollies. Oh, do the Mollies make those? Yeah. I guess that makes more sense. I still the think my, um, my favorite to laugh at, the Lane Hackers. Oh, my fucking the God. Dumbest name ever. The lane hackers. I mean, like they're they're probably the, you're the most like run of the mill, cut and dried pirate group out of everyone in uh, honorable out of all the sector. criminal groups. Well, no, not not so much that because if you want to talk honorable, then you got uh, what the fuck are they called? The blood dragons. But um, true. they're just like your typical like buccaneers. Just in space which instead is of on get water. Us in so much trouble the moment I say it. I mean, he already was talking about peaceful protests. So. Yeah, no, that's a big nope. None of that is making it into the episode. Nice job, guys. Uh, I don't think Ringo ever got to finish talking about sort of like his. No, I, I'm good. The Liberty sure Rose. Yeah. Liberty Rose. The Liberty Rose. Oh, man. Is it okay if we spoil the story? I mean, I assume so. the game came out in This is such an old ass game, right dude. Yeah. Let's spoil away. So, like, there's the aliens. The Surprise. <laughs> yeah. Woo. The basis of the story is this: the sector of the galaxy that you've come to, the Sirius sector, uh, is filled with old, ancient alien ruins, and I think she called them the Don. The Something like that, yeah. It sounds so they left familiar. Behind, I think it's based off of something. They left behind like these caretaker 
bio droid things called the nomads and at least that's what we call them they're yeah, essentially yeah they, they probably have a name star wars alien but they're uh, opportunistic parasites both of uh organic and mechanical things and they view <sighs> They view humanity's presence in the serious sector as uh, abhorrent and a threat to their masters, who are long dead and gone. Um, so the nomads are trying to get the humans to just murder each other. So they're taking over high-level politics or politicians and trying to get them to fight to get their countries to fight each other and murk each other. So the nomads can just sweep up what remains of humanity and fuck them who cares uh they well there, i think there was also a sense of now that the dom kavash are gone we are the masters of this territory and you are not welcome in it no i don't think it was so much that as it was just like because they they make it sound like the nomads have like a semi-sentience but they're still very much like programmed to do what they're programmed to do so it's just like your presence here is a threat to the empire you will be destroyed yeah and uh so at the beginning of the game you get told that this group called the order is like an international terrorist group turns out the order is the people who are fighting the the nomads yeah, and they're the basically the taking over high level the president. Schultz is a fucking traitor. Schultz, he's a traitor. That's, We're here to protect the president. Like, your your first, yeah, your first exposure <laughs> to them is just like a bunch of their ships come out of hyperspace just and just blow like, up, uh, come screaming ship. towards a battleship uh, that's carrying this guy. And if you do like I do, which nobody did except me, and you read like the news stories in the bars. You you can see that there's a story lining up that right now there is tensions between the different colonies and specifically there are very high tensions between Rhineland and Kusari because Rhineland is claiming that Kusari keeps fucking with their shit in the in between worlds between the main colony groups and Kusari's like no we don't do that stop accusing us of it and so this tension is getting really really high. And Jacoby, the president of Liberty, is now trying to get them to go to peace talks. And to this end, she's agreed to talk with Admiral Schultzke, who uh, is the head of the Rhineland hired, military. He's, he's the head of the Rhineland military, <clears throat> essentially to try to help smooth over relations between Rhineland and Liberty and convince Rhineland's chancellor to agree to a summit for peace talks with Kusari. And then the order comes out of space, and uh, and you you hear all this like we're we're seeing incoming vessels. Everyone get ready for battle. And then the order just pops on the radio. We're here to protect the president. Just gets a traitor. That's like, nice. Is... That's lovely audio that you just. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that audio was about as good as 1991. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're here to protect the president. Schultzky's a traitor. And then they just I blow up the ship, and it's like, oh, Schultz shit, dog. We're here to protect the president. Trotsky's a traitor. Or is it just yeah, they just kill the guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then you uh, immediately they kill them. Kill oh, can I Can I go, can I Can I mention <clears> this real quick? Why is it in cutscenes, battleships are made out of paper and just instantly get obliterated? Constantly. Well, when, <laughs> when you have to when fight in combat, them in an actual they have fight, such they massive have health 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 health. Health. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's like you run, you run up to him and you shoot a missile at him, and it's like, it's what? like boom, that has done one percent oh of health. God, it's like, is that all you have, comrades? <laughs> yeah, except that there's no Russia because Russia was part of the coalition. Space uh, Russia would have been dude, fun. Be so in, in fun. Serious. It would have been great. So a bunch of you'd have funny, uh, actually I watched the you'd have one of the pirate groups is called the Gopniks. <laughs> oh man, that would have been dope. <laughs> um, I actually a commodity called vodka. <laughs> I watched the opening cutscene to Star Lancer, and the opening cutscene to Star Lancer is actually space Russians, uh, who said they were coming for a peaceful mission, 
and then just decloaked a bunch of ships and wrecked the enemy and then went, these people are fucking stupid. Wow. Space Russia. They sound Space like fantastic... Uh, no shit from anybody. They sound like fantastic yeah. people to hang out with. <sighs> you know, yeah, here's cool. what I think is hilarious about that. In Star Lancer, like, right at the beginning, you have cloaked ships. Like, instantaneously. That's the one of the first cutscenes is actual cloaking devices on the ships. As yeah, soon as you... Like, as Whoa, soon as nobody's ever gotten that to work ever in As Freelancer. soon as you see cloaked ships come out of Rhineland... They they're like, cloaking devices have never worked. You haven't even the Liberty Military has ever gotten them to work as if the Liberty Military is like on the cutting edge of technology at all times, which we will learn as we play the game. They absolutely are not. They're very, very far behind. <laughs> so you haven't really said much, Beard, about your experience playing. With Freelancer? Okay, so this is where I'm gonna. This is where I'm gonna probably talk a lot with Zeta. But um, I played through the game one time. Story was great. Story was fantastic. Love the story. Love the cutscenes. Love the space combat. Don't love the you know bar scenes so much. Uh, but then the second time, I I then I chose to do a new game again for the second time, knowing what I was getting into. I was like, it's time for mods. And, uh, Freelancer is pretty much the only game I liked so much I modded the ever-loving shit out of it. Freelancer has some good mods. For instance, there's one um, that lets you take your your uh, essentially the spaceship equivalent of a sprint uh, and turn it into just an endless super speed button. Which is great when you have to race fucking Dexter. Yeah. Uh, I haven't got there yet. I'm wondering if I'll cave and actually mod. I've been trying to, like, not mod my game this time. Because, I, well, I wanted a more genuine re, re, uh, a more genuine experience for this episode to talk about it. And one, uh, of, the, one of the big things, um, or one of the big mods you, at the you time... Silent, Zeta. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. there we go. Yes. I don't know what the fuck happens. <laughs> I don't know the either. The last thing I can do is just try to redo the call. No, what I was saying is I can't play Freelancer without the speed mod anymore because I it I do not have the patience to be like, oh, go all the way down this trade lane and then come halfway back down the trade lane but out into the middle of the fucking nowhere, like that's an, an equidistant amount. But now you got to do it in just your cruise engines. Oh, so it's like 60, whatever the K means. It can't possibly be kilometers, but... Um, I mean, it's probably like kilo, kilo I don't know. Space yeah, kilo kilometers. Is what space kilometers. Yeah, space kilometers. Giga oh, yeah. tetra kilometers. Fact, can we talk about the fact that you go through shit so quickly, uh, but it's very clear based on the dialogue and how frequently news stories update that... Your five minute mission took place over like three days, and the distance you just traversed from the edge of the nebula to three kilometers into the nebula is actually more like five light years. <laughs> well, not like that. It's it's under one it's... light year because like five light years is like the difference between like the whole fucking uh, no, colony like... is like. They'll be well, like, I suppose from star to star is probably a few And then you'll go like two inches into the nebula and be like, yeah, we totally lost them in the nebula. And it's like, yeah. based on the dialogue, this sounds like I went much deeper into this nebula than we actually did. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and then like... Um, now lost half the podcast. Yeah, no, I'm still this, here. In, in this still one. Here. <laughs> oh, we just don't have <laughs> They've gone audio, audio only. Yeah, um, but I was a big uh, fan but... of the Stargate SG-1 ships mod that lets you drive around the giant um, Jaffa pyramid ship, which was dope. I, I did not particularly like the Jaffa pyramid ship, and it's actually gold, not Jaffa. 
you I mean but, you're right. Um, um the Prometheus was fun. My main issue with that one was that like it auto started you in a location that was so far from the serious sector, it took like eons to eventually oh yeah when well, you you start out in pegasus back to, yeah back to the actual game part like i didn't really want the addition of the entire fucking milky way galaxy <laughs> and the pegasus galaxy and the pegasus mm -hmm. galaxy i wasn't really what i downloaded that mod for but i no, got you it. just wanted the cool default, ships we, i just wanted cool ships to fly around in what already exists one but of the then I had to spend like island. 30 hours flying to what already existed. <laughs> yeah. It's like... Um, don't, don't get me wrong, because I was about to bring this up too. It's like, I love exploring space in that game. They make space feel like something worth flying around and exploring. Like, if you find a debris field, who knows what the fuck's in that debris field. You might find a junker base... You might find jump holes to places that otherwise you wouldn't be able to access from this system. Um, I mean, it's through doing exactly that that you discover the monkey and the robot systems, which is literally just mm -hmm. like a joke system with two planets in it. And one planet is all robots and one planet is all monkeys. I was just like you a developer a joke zone, you know? One planet is just all developers. Yeah, yeah, those are the they, that's the robots. I can say no. One planet is all developers, and one planet is all the corporate overlords. Hmm. You guess which is which. The robots are the developers, and the monkeys are the corporate overlords because they're wearing suits. I guess. Mr. Trent, you're back. And the robots, and the robots are the developers because the uh, um, the developers are just treated like mindless drones. Made for the uh, yeah, um, one's digital and the other one's profit. Microsoft. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, one's 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 digital and one's Microsoft. Yeah, um, see, do not so step on my I keyboard. Wanted, I wanted to mention though is like, so I'm always a big proponent of universe uh, building and storytelling, and um, so I feel like there was definitely plenty of that. But it was mostly done. Outside of gameplay, outside of cutscenes, you get like info that you could get on zones, areas. If you landed on a planet, you get an info tag and you could get the lore of the planet and whatnot. Uh, and very similarly to how it was annoying to access the, the lore in Destiny when Destiny came out. Likewise, in Freelancer, there's like a whole huge universe of storytelling out there. But you kind of have to go way the fuck out of your way and give a shit about things that have nothing to do with the, the story the game is trying to tell you during cutscenes and whatnot to actually learn about any of it. They barely mention any of the history or stuff going on. Like, remember how I told you earlier if you read the newspapers, but I also said nobody did that because you go to the bar and you, and you open up this news report thing and it does this all... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dude, breaking news. That's like the color. Breaking news. news. The news that's right for you or whatever. And first of all, I think a bunch of people went, oh, this is news stories? Yeah, I don't care. And they moved on. Because um, then, like, you look at these, and a lot of the time, because I remember doing this back when I first played through Freelancer, I look at the news stories and be like, some of these are interesting. And the rest of these have nothing to do with anything I'm doing, so why do I care? Bye. And I didn't even read them, because they, they just, like, I didn't, well, back then, I didn't care as much about the universe building that they were trying to do there. And I didn't bother to look up the information tags on most of the planets and bases that I landed on, because I, for the longest time, I didn't even know they were there. So, that the pause I keep doing is because I keep yawning. I didn't sleep tonight, so. <laughs> I was just looking at um, I was just looking at the record of Digital Anvil, the company. Uh, 
which, by the way, is no longer a company. Unfortunately. Yeah. They weren't around for very long. They were... Uh, they were... A lot of game companies fall into that boat. Yeah. They, weren't they were founded in 1996, out. purchased by Microsoft in 2000, and then dissolved in 2006. So not, they weren't around. They were around for like a decade. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, and I just wanted to say like there, there's so much story that gets told through that. So like they explain things like uh, they explain what's going on between Rhineland and Kusari. They explain what's going like why tensions are rising on the political level. Why tensions are rising between the between the colonies and all of that, and what's what's causing this, what's causing that, um, you get a hint towards the fact that Jacoby, the president of the of Liberty, has figured out that whatever these new artifacts they've recently found out in the middle of nowhere, they clearly have something to do with the problem, and she doesn't want them to cause a problem in Liberty, so she bans all trade of it. And there's there's like a whole kind of story leading up to why she does that, but they never explain that to you in any of the cutscenes or anything. You just know, ah, oh, well, they're about to ban it all together because King tells you. But you don't have mm-hmm. any context for why that is being done unless you read the news stories at the bars. You know, some of them are just little aside stories. Like there's a story about how West Point Academy is making it so you can't haze people anymore because somebody overdrank and died last year. And it's like, that doesn't really have anything to do with anything. So why would I bother reading it? And Frank we've, now it made, uh, we've now made we've now made alcohol illegal because your fuck had, had, had to go and overdrink somebody and they died. So now like you can't drink alcohol. I'm sorry. You can't haze people with alcohol. If you're going to haze yeah. somebody, use the rocket fuel. They literally just said hazing entirely is not allowed at West Point anymore. Um, fucking West Point students who the fuck do you think you are but yeah I mean like that story doesn't have to do with anything because you never the only time West Point is even briefly a part of the story is right as you're leaving Liberty like at when Liberty turns on you because you have the artifact they want now and uh, and you're trying to escape um, you have to pass through West Point space really quick and all, all West Point is, and that is a footnote, like, head, head on the left, go to the trade lane to West Point, go past West Point into the next trade lane to the next place you gotta go. That's it. That's all it features in the story. There's nothing important going on there. It's just like when you're driving to Taco Bell, it's like, you go by, uh, go by GSU, uh, it's a quarter of a mile down to Pecos and, and, uh, get the Taco Bell. What? Yeah. Exactly. Talk about actually do be sounding kind of good right now, though. <laughs> Shut up. Give me two. Um. But uh. But yeah, there's just like uh. I also they they also introduce this idea of like um in several of the nebulas there's like these weird shiny things. I don't even know what to call them. They're just like it's like the form it's like a itty bitty star formation. Maybe I don't know. Inside the nebulas, and there's a bunch of stations throughout the main missions that are set up. Oh, the anomalies! The of, yeah, they call them anomalies for for the purpose of studying them. But at every single station that's one of those that you come across, it's always like some somebody goes, "I know a place where we can hide out," and it's always a station that's looking at an anomaly. Yeah, it's like, "Gee, let and me then, guess." And then. Five minutes later, an army of bad guys shows up and blows up that station. None of them survived the main story. <laughs> uh, and, and they mentioned that the only mention we get is that the first of those stations mentions that these stations were commissioned for a project to determine if the anomalies could be used to fuel Liberty's waning resources. This was before the gas mining guild. 
and that's all the story we get about it. Yeah, for extra stuff like that, they're not very good at filling out the story. But I think they make up for that by telling a really dope ass main story that's really like well written and well developed and is very good. And it's filled with espionage and drama. And space Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, can we please talk about Space Morpheus for a minute? Space <laughs> Space Morpheus oh, really? is, is fantastic. Oh, really? In Space Morpheus? <laughs> yeah. He's literally Space now, Morpheus. Now, there's a really good reason we call him Space Morpheus, right? Because once you once you discover that it's like, oh, the nomads are behind everything. They're the real the real bad guys. Suddenly he appears to you and he's just like, you've discovered the truth. Now it's time to join the good fight or whatever. Yeah, and then he's, he's like, he's all like, he, he's like, I'm he's here like, to like, offer you. If you take the red pill, you stay yeah, in one awesome. land. Yeah, only, only he doesn't offer that. you a blue pill. He's like, if you take the red pill, you'll you. <laughs> if you take the red pill, you get to keep living, kid. Let's let's just be honest. Yeah, more or less. He's like, if you take the red pill, the nomads don't kill you, and you get to see another tomorrow. What's well, the other option? You take the red pill. The, yeah, the other option is I like, push you out the airlock. Yeah, you yeah, go go by old Doctor Quintain. Yes, and I thank you for your help. <laughs> Throw them out the airlock. I'm out the airlock. I thank you for your help. Throw them out the airlock. Quintain is fantastic. I love him. Yes, and I thank you for that. Toss him out the airlock. <laughs> Another girl? What have you been doing, boy? <laughs> John Rhys Davies. John Reese Davies, that he, I think Tobias is maybe the best character in that game. Maybe. <laughs> Cause I like, love when he actually gets to meet Quintain too. Yeah, he's like, God, what a stuck All up master. Right, Mister Wizard, I assume you've come to see the missus. Yeah. See the characters that have like unique voice actors and. Unique dialogue. They have They're the cool. best dialogue because, of course. Cool. Yeah. Lord Hakira. Oh, wow. Played, played by George Takai. George Takai. George Takai. Rest in peace. George Takai. Oh, did he pass on? I'm pretty sure he did. I don't know. I think I would have heard about that. Pretty sure he did. If he didn't, then oh boy, do I look stupid once again. But hey, at this point, that's my fucking track record, so who cares? Yeah, he's again. still around. He's 84 years old, though. So. Was, somebody died. That, oh, it wasn't George K. It was. Um, <laughs> he oh, tweeted 16 I'm minutes ago. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. This is going to make me sound racist as hell. The other Asian that was on, <laughs> that was on Star Trek. I'm trying to remember. It's like Lieutenant something. Are you talking about Sulu? Or yes, yeah, Sulu. That was That's George, George Takai. Takai. <laughs> oh, is it? Yes. Fuck. You're probably what thinking about another movie? actor that played uh, Sulu at a later point. Um, <laughs> he's 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 gonna go to he's gonna go to Google right now. Playing right now. He's playing he right now. He's actually playing freelancer right now. That's why he's being really quiet. <laughs> But yeah, George Takai is 84 years old, and he just discussion. tweeted 17 minutes ago, so he's he's alive. What do you mean, man? He says they just his, blew his up long again. 17 minutes ago, though, is actually pretty cringe. Because he means it one way, and it definitely realistically means the other way. Who was it? Who Sir died? Patrick Stewart is on Twitter. Oh. That's oh. not surprising. He's eating beans on toast. Oh, what the fuck? Wait, why? If you're thinking of a, a Star Trek character that passed away somewhat recently, you're probably thinking of uh, Leonard Nimoy, Mr. Spock. Oh, yeah. He passed, Leonard Nimoy. passed away like a, a year or two he ago. Did. He did. I think everybody else from the original cast is still around. I, I, but I, I, never, I never like know when shit is happening. Until I go on iFunny. Oh, oh, Patrick Stewart. Memes of it. 
Patrick Stewart is tweeting about dogs that need to be adopted from a dog shelter. That's adorable. <laughs> I'm too old to take care of all these dogs by myself, so I will get the X-Men to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to join the X-Men, you must adopt a dog. Beast Boy, be like, bruh. <laughs> Beast Boy, yeah, they put him in a shelter, I bet. Wait, is it Beast Boy oh, Beastie? No. no. Yeah, he is, but that's not the point. Oh, wait, yeah, Beast Boy. Yeah, I was thinking of the Beast. He's on the Teen Titans, dumbass. Of course he's DC. I was just thinking of Beast. What do you mean, Beast Boy? Be like, bro, he's not even in the same universe. The fuck? Okay, and they're both fictional. Okay, sure, but like... The point is, any universe that you put Superman into, you don't really need any other heroes. No, that's not true. Any, I, I, I will argue, any universe you put Superman into, you you need and must have Batman. <laughs> That is, those are the yin and yang. If you if you have Superman, you have to have Batman because Batman is the one that can stop him. So if you have Sentry, you have to have Moon Knight. Is that is that your argument? Yes. Oh my god! No, you should just never have Moon Knight, honestly. <laughs> no, you should always have Moon Knight. Bullshit! No. <laughs> you should have. <laughs> you should we, have we've Moon Knight and Ash We've completely jumped off the freelancer train. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about I wanted to talk about George Takai and was. Yeah, you wanted to talk, talk about and then we just fucked you wanted to talk about what Dave? How cool exploration is. Yeah, I mean it was it was it was cool, but it was also kind of. I have something to say on that actually. I have, it was I have a, a little bit of there's a little bit of a so lot of time where nothing happens. The story of the game that kind of condition you to pretty much never leave the trade lanes. Like yeah. you only leave, you only deviate to go like to specific jump holes, but there's not really much else going on about there. However, once you've completed, you don't even have to complete the main storyline to do it. Once you just get access to the universe at large, um, it, it becomes a lot easier with the speed mod too. You can literally just cover your system map, um, in uh, in like a patrol to go up and down, up and down, up and down, and discover. All the cool shit going on. Oh, that's right. And I forgot yeah, that you could find... set points on your map and autopilot your ship. Yeah, yeah. you can only autopilot inside a system, though. Because if, if you're in, like, Edinburgh and you have to get to uh, the planet New California, every system that you go to, you have to set a new autopilot path. You can't be, like... You can't launch from Edinburgh and be like, take me to planet Pittsburgh. I'm from Pittsburgh, and I'd like to go to Pittsburgh. That was that was my biggest nitpick with uh, with exploration is you can't be like you can't set your autopilot to be like go through this jump hole and then when you get in the new system go through that jump hole and then when you get into this system go to that jump hole and then go to this area I haven't been to yet in this new system. No, be because fair, doing that would be too complicated main, for our programmers. All the main systems have jump gates. Um, I love how they use this this story or universe idea of phase aligned jump holes. And if it's not phase aligned, you can't use it. Which, as a gameplay mechanic, is literally just we don't want you going here yet, so we're not going to let you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they pretend like it matters. I'm going to use the restroom real quick. I'll be right back. Oh no, he's abandoning the podcast. I'm just oh, kidding. No. I'm no, just I kidding. Be right back. I'm just kidding. Good to you. Whatever you. shall we do? Quick, the historian's away. Let's talk about memes. <laughs> Mr. Trent, you're back. <laughs> Mr. Trent, your dick. My oh, dick's falling off. Shocked and killed while trying to escape from liberty. Yeah, I can. That's right, James. I can hear your game. Well, that's not good. Sam Lonigan. <laughs> Sam Lonigan. Yeah, they Epic killed him. Baka sus amogus Fortnite pranksters. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> 
So, uh, Zeta. Yeah. What do you think of, of uh, Modius uh, still being uh, Lucy's guardian, even after he's smart? Or he's outed as being intelligent? Um, well, I haven't gotten to read the latest two episodes because uh, I'm currently poor. Wait, wait. So, but are you talking what? About? You talking about the Fast Pass ones? Yeah. Oh, I haven't read the Fast Pass ones. I don't bother with Fast Pass. Oh, well. Um, I, I mean, I knew going in that the story was going to be a romance story because it's tagged as a romance story. So yeah. I, mm-hmm. I, obviously why they have to do that yeah but um i don't know it's it i just love the absolute shocked face uh of norix when he finds out that his robot can talk yeah what has he told you (laughs) what has he told you flash flash back to be 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 quiet dave be quiet dave flash flash back to yeah, flashback to to Norix going like, "You are pretty." <laughs> it's like, "What has he told you?" <laughs> not not that much, actually. <laughs> yeah, what has he told you? He likes birds. Yeah, he likes birds. Are fake and unconvincing. We were talking about something else while you were away. I was gonna say uh, yeah. when you actually get to the point where you like jump into that into hole. Uh, well, when the universe is opened up to you, uh, all the all the uh, jump holes are phase aligned at all times. Yeah, they will never yeah. ever be unphase aligned yeah. ever again. Tis true. Also, exploration and that weird like finding uh, the in- information cards and such. Um, all that. Uh, first of all, I learned that information cards existed because of the Hispanic nice. tribes. Guys, what? don't tell him. If you look at Ringo's glasses, you can see the reflection of his screen. He's going through a jump <laughs> gate right now. Well, yeah. he's a, it looks like a trade lane. Well, it's a trade lane, yeah. I but... It's probably a trade lane because I'm pretty sure that when you go through jump gates right in, in the version we have, that it just like insta-teleports you instead of making you watch mm. cutscene. No. Really? Mine does. Yours is fucking weird. I thought yeah. it was too, but yeah. I'm I'm sitting here. Every so so if I can pull back the curtain just a little bit, Dave had some technical issues installing and running Freelancer because for some reason we By all we some, literally we mean uh, a lot. We literally we literally all did that this week, and and I think the only one to play any was or actually I might have been the only one to not play any. Well, if already, you didn't play. Then yeah, you're the only one who didn't yeah, play. But. Uh, Dave had some technical issues installing it, and I'm just sitting here thinking the whole time, like, man, he's got an an old ass beater of a machine, and I don't know how that thing's still kicking. I mean, I think I technically have the worst computer out of all of us. Mm-hmm. Mine is pretty old. I'm not gonna lie. Like, when did you buy that I, thing? I was still in college, so at least five, six years ago. Because Taylor gave me this in 2015, and it was used then, so it's been around since like 2012. Man, oh man, y'all cost around three hundred dollars <laughs> back then. Y'all need to upgrade your shit. Yeah, my computer's like uh, not even okay. Old yet. So that I'm not really in college anymore, so it's not really a big priority for me. Money. I also need that same green thing called money. Take care of my dentist issues and get a car. And pay for groceries and pay my bills, and I don't have money to buy a nice new computer. Sorry, it's not a top priority for me right now. Yeah, sounds like some first world problems bullshit. It really is. <laughs> I mean, the money part really isn't. That's everybody's problem, but mm-hmm. the specifics of my money problem absolutely first world problems. Yes. Should I put another fifty dollars towards getting a vehicle, or should I buy a pizza? In this case, Dave always answers, "Buy a pizza." Should if you're I buying invest? a pizza that costs fifty dollars, you need to stop. What? 
Like, who's buying fifty dollar pizza? It's a borrows. Uh, borrows gets pretty expensive. It's a, it's, pretty I was gonna say it's a borrows pizza with six extra toppings. <laughs> Jesus, fucking. Jeez, dude. If I buy pizza, it's Little Caesars. Five bucks. That's all I spend. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes my wife will be like, "Oh, I really want borrows pizza tonight," and I'll be like, "Okay, what do you want?" She'll be like. I want like the large pepperoni pizza and I want like 24 uh, wings. So we get that and then they're like, that'll be 47 and some change. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> hate, hate, hate red. It's just like, huh? it's pizza, bro. Why yeah. is it so expensive? It's, it's, it's like, it's why, is, why is this cost it's so much? Bread. With sauce and cheese on it. You look at the price. And it, and it turns out, though, it's actually it's actually the wings that cost more than anything else, which is ridiculous. Look ah, at the price. Get a heart attack. Eat the pizza. Get a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Power through both both of I them know. because I'm gonna listen to my manager coming to my funeral and being like, "I need you to come in tomorrow." <laughs> <laughs> Jensen, how could you die on us? We needed you to come in tomorrow at six a.m. I love that joke. That like, I can't believe you died. We're so understaffed. It's like, yeah. We're so no understaffed shit. on Saturday. Thanks, my guy. Um, oh, I'm so sorry, boss. That my fucking Curtis, death okay. inconveniences you. Let's uh, let's be honest though. It could the real be answer. Better. There Your are places in the touching. world where staying late or coming in on your day off is fucking expected, and no, you don't get paid more for it. But we're talking about freelancer today. Yeah, there yeah. are no days off in freelancer. There are no, there are no days you're off in freelancer. You're, you're running from the government. Of course, you don't get a day off. Yeah. Although it's funny because if you read any of the lore for the lane hackers, they certainly seem to think they can have days off whenever they want, <laughs> and they keep getting almost caught by the government because they like. Decide to go compete in the Olympic Games or have. I was gonna say, aren't cruise. aren't they aren't the lane hackers like the the really over dramatized like cringe like ni early nineties hacker type wears a Nintendo Power Glove and shades Darude Sandstorm ass people. The the no, idea behind the like lane hackers. That. The idea behind the lane hackers is they were originally part of the company that built like the gates and the trade lanes. Uh, and then somebody in their company made some kind of software that allowed them to scan uh, a lot farther than anybody else. So they could see what you're carrying. They could see what trade routes you're coming down. Uh, so they could go and uh, they don't even have to shoot the trade lanes to disable them. They just have like a backdoor off switch. So that makes their piracy a lot easier. Uh, a lot and more then, efficient. yeah. And then there's there's a couple other things that happens where it's like, oh, the to combat this, it they had to build more expensive technologies, which put people uh, in the company out of a job who ended up joining the lane hackers because of it. And it's it's just this whole thing where it's essentially like uh, corporate interests versus more or less piracy from inside the company. Like they're, it's like their own self-grown villain, basically. It's very um, Edward Nigma. Edward Nigma. Kind of, but a lot more, a lot, a lot less Batman villain, and a lot more just, hey, this would be a really easy get-rich-quick scheme, and then it ends up turning into this wasn't whole thing. That, wasn't that the Riddler's whole thing? I don't think so, but I'm not like super keen on, on DC I guess it comics. Depends on the the version, but. I know the one in the in like the movies back in the nineties. One was, was like, played by Jim Carrey. He he he. It wasn't a good rich great, scheme. He comes up with a great idea, or he thinks it's a great idea, and Bruce Wayne is basically like, "Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Leave me alone." And then he's like, "Corporate America is terrible and deserves to die." And it's like, dude, chill. <laughs> yeah, which is they cast Jim Carrey. Or like, or like the part both where him and Robotnik. The part where the say, and he plays Robotnik in the Sonic movie too. The part where the Joker is like, "They told me we'd have electric cars in a year. Where's my electric car, Bruce?" 
<laughs> Wayne Tech was supposed to have an electric car by this year. I put it down the deposit. Up. Where's my goddamn electric car, Bruce? Oh, man. What's, um, I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, we were talking about the lane hackers. I was actually going to say, all the criminal elements, except the rogues, have a really interesting backstory for the most part. Like, they're, they're uh, never... Uh... Most of them are not just there to be... Well, actually, no. Also, the Gaians have a shitty backstory, but... Yeah, I was going to say, the Gaians, the, Mo the Mollies are literally just your typical, like, London street thugs. They're just like, hey, bro, give me your money. No. Like, that's, <laughs> the, that's Mollies, the Mollies. The Mollies were actually miners. And essentially... They, uh, they were of the, the junkers. No, 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 no. Listen, this is literally the story of Fallout 76 before Fallout 76 came out. Um, they were miners and their jobs got taken up by automation and they got fucking pissed off because a fuck ton of them got laid off and they don't get to make money anymore. And since there's nowhere in the market for them to go because all the jobs they used to do are now held handled by machines, they instead of Instead of wanting, and, and I don't, don't get me wrong, I totally understand why people don't want to do this. I'm not trying to make fun of them. Instead of attempting to adapt to the situation, like learn a new set of skills or whatever, which in fairness would take time that they don't have because they got to still pay their rent. They just turned to robbing everybody for whatever they could get because that keeps bread on their table. Yeah, the point being that they are now I need, just I like, need to pay my rent, so well, give me your money. Hey, bro, I've got to pay for me flat. Give me your wallet. The Corsairs and the Outcasts are both uh, are both uh, remnants. Kuma addicted Hispania. freaks from Hispania land. <laughs> well, here's the here's the fun part. Actually, I again reading reading the news, you find out the Outcasts and the Corsairs don't actually hate each other. They just very professionally are not friends. Yeah, because they're they're each other's number one competitor. Yeah, basically. They don't um, attack each other though, unless here's, here's uh, they go I feel the bad for the outcasts. I really do, because their backstory is that after their ship blows up and they like half-assedly like bum rush to find some place to live. They yeah, they the they planet. make it to the nearest planet uh, that's barely that survivable. They find that there's actually an abundant food source that humans can digest and eat. And they use it to make bread. They use it to do every... It's basically like wheat, but it's just alien wheat. Spice first, wheat! It, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem to be a problem. A few generations down the line, it becomes evident, oh, this has permanently changed our genetic code, and we literally cannot live without this thing in our system anymore. Yeah. And the farther and, away from the planet uh, you are, the more uh, upsetting to your stomach it is. Yeah. And um, so what happens is that they basically uh, decide to turn this into a super hip new drug for all the gangsters to use. <laughs> yeah, because once, once everybody needs it, they'll come running to buy it, and then that's your new economy boom. We'll have the whole... has to have it. Yeah, I was going to say, they have the only source of it on their planet. The Corsairs are not limited by any such thing. Hello, kids. Are you interested in this sweet new drug? <laughs> yeah, basically. No, these these are these are the, the Spaniards. They wouldn't sound like that. Hello, oh, children. Hello, children. Are you interested in this sweet new drug? They killed my father. That's... That sounds like Khajiit, not uh As Khajiit is innocent of this crime. Khajiit uh -huh. Khajiit has skooma if you have coin. Khajiit have coin so, if you have skooma. So the Xenos are another uh great example 
that they're basically workers that got shafted. Yeah, by the Xenos, they're a little bit weird. They're kind of like Xenos. They're kind of like spindly and like have like an outer carapace and they spit acid. Yeah, and they when they like when they yell like a their tongue comes out and there's like a second mouth on it. Yeah, it's really weird. They're really acidic yeah. blood. They make these really odd hissing tail. noises. And they are considered heresy in the eyes of the emperor. <laughs> All the Xenos jokes out of the way now. <laughs> We've got this uh, this queen with a long tail that she uses to impale people and impregnate them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Xenos. <laughs> All will fall before the Imperium of Man. What are you talking about? Is this a Warhammer thing? Yes. So... <laughs> Okay. That that Zeta is talking about? Yes, absolutely. I don't there know is Warhammer. There's a and freelancer called He's the Zeta. He's talking about uh, the Alien I'm... franchise. I'm talking about Warhammer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just just to clear things up, in Warhammer 40k, which is probably known by most of our audience way better than freelancer is, and not Warhammer known to me. In Warhammer 40k, anyone who's not human by the Imperium of Man is referred to as a Xenos, primarily. The Eldar and the Orcs. Which are elves and orcs, by the way. Yes. As space well as, elves and space as well orcs. As We're literally just part orcs. of the chaos insurgency. Anybody um, who's not human is a Xeno, and anybody who's a Xeno is wrong. Yeah, that's yeah, very much the point of view of it's it's basically take like Adam. your your like pumped up military bravado and instead of turning that to 11 turn it to 11,000 and that's <laughs> Warhammer I, Warhammer is honestly well encapsulated by its tagline which is in the grim darkness of the future there is only war yeah for the emperor so yeah that's, that's the whole Imperium thing they just want to kill everything that's not human and in fairness, with the exception of the Tau, I would argue that they're right. <laughs> Everything in this universe is shitty and terrible. Uh, and the only species, uh, yeah. the only species so you're... that doesn't, that isn't terrible is the Tau. Because they're the you're... only ones who are like, guys, can we can we just like be friends and not kill each other constantly? So they're so you're they're just like, me. no, I just gotta feed my kids, man. <laughs> so you're <laughs> telling me tau. that... You're telling me that space in Warhammer is basically just Australia. No, it's more like I'm space Australia came thousand. knocking. Yeah. Okay, so it's it's space Aust it's space Australia edition. Yeah, it's essentially what do you mean? Australia. What do you mean you don't want to get into that too much? Everything in Australia that's not an Australian tries to kill you. And even some Australians. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's that's my then. point. You're gonna go on that. Anyway, so freelancer has a similar yeah. disposition. Only instead of it being uh, scary battleship-sized Tyranid monsters, it's just the Corsairs <laughs> and their ultra-heavy so bomber fighters. A faction called the Xenos, and they're called that because they're xenophobes. Basically, Xenos. Their issue is. What happened in their backstory is that uh, in uh, in the serious sector, Liberty also outsourced a lot of work to Kusari and Rhineland corporations, and this lost a fuck ton of Liberty workers their jobs, and those Liberty workers got pissed off and have decided that. It's the people who aren't from Liberty. That's the problem. Everyone who's not us, that's why we have a shitty life. They deserve to not exist in our country. So they're boomers, basically. Oh, God. Hell of like, boomers. Goddamn immigrants. They, yeah, uh-huh. Yep. That is their, their entire proposition is just their goal is to stop all foreign trade from entering Liberty because they believe that the good old days when Liberty did everything themselves is the way that it should be. Fucking boomers! Uh, yeah, exactly. But I I'm just saying, like, every <laughs> faction has a backstory. That's their backstory, and it's a very racist so one. So tell me, Dave. 
what's hey, the we're, what's we're, what's the backstory yeah. of the nomads? We kind of just I went think into I that covered that a while ago a while with a whole back. like they're the relics of the Dom Kavash, so, essentially. There was a like there was an alien species, system. yeah, called the Dom Kavash, which were uh, the people that lived in the Sirius Sector prior to humanity. They created the nomads. The nomads were basically like biological but also technological creations. And they're very unclear exactly. What we know is that they are opportunistic. They're described as opportunistic parasites that can infect both biological people and things, and they can also infect machines. They're basically Uh, organic computers that have turned into a virus because their masters are no longer around to defrag. So it's like, so it's like the whatever from Destiny. The Vex. You know, those the people that's basically the replicators from Stargate. The Vex, yeah. The Vex, okay, sure, yeah. those guys. Yeah, you expect me to fucking remember shit from Destiny? Ace Terminators. The Vex. I mean, here's the thing. We don't actually know the background of the Vex. We know a theory with a lot of things pointing to it. That may very yeah, well be but the they... case, but they've never officially said anything about it. Yeah. Um... But we do know more about the nomads, which is that they are crystalline organic computers. You just looked that up on Wiki. <laughs> no, I just, oh, I, just that that's, I just kind of said that by observation that? because those ships are made out of crystals and they're definitely an organic computer. What was that line that Trent says near the end where he's like, sure, as, as long, long as I'm not, not shot, shot at, at knocked, knocked out, out electrocuted, at point, electrocuted <laughs> skewed, skewed alive, alive by, by giant, giant alien, alien shapeshifters. Yeah. <laughs> I have to dive out windows or fight off spindly nomad incubi. Everything should be fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Subsequently, after that, he has to do all of those things. <laughs> Pretty much. No, I think he said that because, like, at, by the end of the game, of he's had to do all point. of those yeah. things. Yep. But essentially, the idea is the nomads are what are left over from the Dom Kavash's days. And they are very not happy that humanity is here and they want to wipe out humanity. But they are not themselves strong enough to do so. So in order to solve that problem, they decide to uh, opportunistically parasite into the major political powers and uh, cause the countries to fight themselves and kill each other. So that whatever is left over is easy enough for the nomads to just mop up. Which I always thought it was funny that it's like, oh, they're not strong enough to do it by themselves, but it's like, yeah, except nomad ships have, like, fucking huge health bars bigger than anything else. No mm-hmm. shields. No shields, and they're true. they're Yeah, they have no shields, but no capital ship has shields in that game. Their fighters have no shields, though. Um, but their weapons are, like, crazy yeah, right. advanced. Their weapons are some of the best weapons in the game. Mm-hmm. I, I still think the uh, the Osiris or the Order Osiris ship fighter thing is the best. The Order. I love how that's like supposed to be an experimental Liberty stealth craft that mm-hmm. the Order just sort of like stole, and now Liberty. But technically, the Order is Liberty, though. It, they just they're yeah, they're very basically good at... the Secret Service. Yeah, they're, by the time by they're the here time to protect you learn the about president. Them, find out, yeah. Uh, well, Jacoby does ultimately join the order by the end of the game. Yeah, because she's yeah, I think... basically the the only leader of a. Uh, she's the last one, a right? Colony that isn't that isn't infected yeah. at that. Yeah, point. of course it would be the because fucking you rescue American... her from getting infected. Of course it'd be the fucking American president in a game made by America. Here's the fun thing. Space Jam! I'm, I'm relatively certain, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm relatively certain that the Queen of Britannia gets infected and the entire country of Britannia is just like, off with her head! <laughs> like, instantly they're like, no, we're not putting up with your bullshit. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, fuck off now. Nah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I. To, to be fair, if you live in Britannia and the Queen comes out and says... I have an announcement to make. As of right now, no more tea time. You're probably going to murder the queen. <laughs> Oi, fuck off now. <laughs> Oi, no more tea time. Right, something's in her jollies, boys. Let's take her out. 
Oh Way to alienate the entire <laughs> large. That's what they people. fucking oh, sound like. We've already alienated so many Bunch people. Of this one. Gonna, this, by the time <laughs> this goes out, there's gonna be like one person that watches it. <laughs> any British, any British person who gets actually super uptight offended by uh, our American stereotypical British jokes doesn't deserve to watch our content. Listen, they can, listen. It's it'd be really easy for them to just fire right back and be like, "I'll have a cheeseburger." <laughs> I mean, you, you're not wrong. Like, if you want to clap back with American I stereotypes, I you I, I Tuesday. <laughs> yes, I will gladly pay you for pay Tuesday. You Tuesday. I will well, gladly pay Tuesday for a hamburger. I'll just like you know, it, it'd be so easy for them. It'd be so easy for them to go like, "I'd like to go to school. Please put me in seventy-five thousand dollars of debt." Yeah, and there's yeah. that. But then again, I'd be like, uh, you know, at least we know how eighty plus percent of us are giant fat asses, <laughs> and eighty yeah. percent of the giant fat asses are so fat they can't even walk and hold themselves up anymore. Amen. They're they're so Amen. fucking fat that they they start to slur their bees. <laughs> I'm going to take this burrito into the bathroom. <laughs> uh, I'll, 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 I'll link that to I think you you've later. Enough, sir. I, I'll link that to you later, but my god, is it hilarious. Hey, alienating more people. I'm fat, by the way. Super fat. Oh, so am I. That's why I'm allowed to make fun of us. Yeah. Oh, I my say, BMI like, says I'm technically obese, so. You I'm know, allowed to laugh at you because I don't give a fuck. I was gonna say the t I, I remember talking to America. The term yeah. "obese" doesn't mean much because that's basically everybody. Well, I, I just I remember talking to a doctor when we were discussing my condition, and he said, "You're actually obese." And I was like, "What the fuck does that mean? I'm actually obese." And he showed me a chart, and he went, "This is everything that's considered obese." And I was like, "Most of that isn't obese." And he goes, "Yeah, I know. You're what's considered on this <laughs> yeah, chart morbidly obese." AKA regular obese for smart yeah, people. Yeah, AKA exactly. fucking yeah, do a workout just... once in a while. God damn. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Eat healthier, work out, you'll lose the weight. That's what I'm doing. I'm working on it. So freelancer. Yeah. Freelancer. We keep we do keep jumping off of it. <laughs> because we don't have that's that's because we're trying week. that's because we're trying to stretch out a game that's like uh it's like a, a yeah. A, I mean, we've 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 covered pretty 20, much everything we're gonna cover. It's like a twenty-hour uh, experience at most, and we're trying to stretch it into two hours of a podcast. It's well, <laughs> we'd be able to all talk about different things. Like, uh, I don't know. I I really did like the storytelling, and it was really well done. Well, um, so do I. But we've already gone over that. Oh, we already gone over the storytelling yeah. and. Favorite I like part the about, building, but we already talked about the sheer customization that you can the sheer customization that you can uh put up with very different types of ships so you can get a ship from an independent system and get all kusari weapons and then get all rhineland Ooh. shields and and shit like that i did want um, to mention the, there's a lot of customization that you can go into with your equipment i wanted to go into like um Really quickly, I think Ringo wanted to say something, but I did. I do want to put a note that I wanted to talk about the um, uh, fuck the reputation Discovery. system and yeah, then how like even like so many different factions have their own unique ships. That's true. <sighs> like the like the zoners have those. It's like a little hammerhead looking thing that you can't buy it's called a csv and you can't have it for some dumbass reason well ringo what were you gonna say you started saying say something my like favorite you. part about freelancer is the combat yeah combat's pretty fucking cool well why don't you describe that to us what what is the combat how does it work well you fly around in your ship right and you have this free three-dimensional plane of you can go in whatever direction you want orient however you want uh and basically when when it shows like another ship an enemy ship like it has like the little box outline whatever and then it has this little like 
crosshair that you have to aim at, which was not where the ship is, it's where the ship is going. So it actually uh, is a good way to teach yourself how to uh, aim, like, what's it called? Leading a target. What's the word? Yeah, it's called leading a target. <laughs> called leading a target. Yeah, but like aiming predictively. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, it's called leading a target. It's leading a target. <laughs> but I'm trying to say it a different fucking way. There's no other way to say it. It's called leading a target. Oh my god. I've never heard of another way to say it. Brain like, dead. you that's know, how you, that's how you shoot. You know, uh, that thing. Target. You have to lead it. The thing where you lead a target. What was it called again? It's called leading a target. Nah. The thing where you take a target and you lead it somewhere. I can't remember what it was called. But yeah, you're trying to shoot where it's going to be instead of where it is. Yeah. You're leading your target. Uh, and you have to because shooting at where it is, you'll miss it all the time. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to I wanted to touch on like the reputation system is great. And the fact that you can literally, the the one thing, I guess this would technically be a complaint about it, because most reputation systems people don't like being able to do this, they they like consequences for your choices, but you can just start murdering normal people, and you can build by doing that you'll build reputation with the, <laughs> with, with the, the uh, pirate groups, yeah, like all the pirate groups and stuff. And then I'll be like, yeah, mass enough. murder, bro. You can, you <laughs> can, Which is kind of concerning, to be honest. You can start taking missions from them, and then you can get it all the way up. Then, after you've been a criminal for, like, three days of you playing the game, you can just decide, I'm tired of being a criminal, and just start mass murdering the criminals to be wow. good with the police yeah. again. Yep. <laughs> What's funny is you can turn around and do that whole thing again after that, and they're just like, yeah, yeah, you're cool again. Yeah, no one ever asked about the fact that they massacred us last time. <laughs> yeah. No one goes like, yeah, you're just here until you're bored, and then you're just going to massacre people again. Like, Oh, what's <laughs> that? Your kill count within our faction is 300,457. 300, oh, but I see that was within a 90-day period ago, so you're totally cool. You can come back. Yeah. I, I see that within the last 30 days, however. The, uh, the amount of... Uh, Corporate ships that you've destroyed is much much higher than that. <laughs> three hundred and three hundred and seventy thousand. So you're pretty cool in our books, according to our mathematician. That means we're in the lead. I can't do math. I'm just the greeter. Uh, uh, to be fair, like what is great about that is you can choose whether you want to be a criminal or someone on the right side of the law and you can switch back and forth whenever you feel like yeah you can disappoint so king whenever sense. you want yeah <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't make sense from like a storytelling standpoint why you would suddenly keep flipping um it doesn't make sense that the factions don't find you uh off putting for doing that but also um, this is an early 2000s game so yeah uh, the other thing I liked was just, like, there's a sheer number of different types of ships and stuff in the game, which is really great, because, like, you you would expect every country's military to have its own distinct like style of, of guns ships, or yeah. vessels or whatever. But then you have some of the independent, uh, like, the independent mining guild, I think, has its own. Um, there's a couple of... There's a couple of actual, like, uh, corporations and guilds that have their own. The bounty hunters have their own ship type. Uh, and almost every criminal faction has their own ship type. A few criminal factions share ship types. So, like we mentioned earlier, the Mollies from Britannia, they made the Bloodhound, the Wolfhound, and I don't remember what the super heavy version of it is. Um, I, I bet it's the Dire Wolf. I'd, be, I'd bet that's what it's called. Um, well, considering the Liberty Bloodhound Road, is their regular one, it's probably the Blood, the uh, Dire Wolf, yeah. Because the Blood Wolf is the heavy. Um, Battleship so, Osiris. So the rogues also use those ones. Um, the outcasts have their own. 
the Corsairs have their own. Uh, the Xenos and the Gaians use uh, Star Trackers and Star Flyers, which are the puniest. The super puniest, basic bitch one. Basic bitch. What was the fucking the flying it's shrimp? Been... Oh, I found it. Star Tracker. That's the Star Tracker. Is that yeah. The Star Tracker. I'm pretty sure it's the Star the, Tracker. The, the heavy Bretonia, version of the Star Tracker is called the, the Bretonnia uh, B907A oh, no, Crusader. The Bre yeah. Crusader oh, heavy you're fighter. talking about the Bretonian yeah. one, yeah. Yeah. That's like oh a mega. <laughs> it's a big old <laughs> shrimp. The Clydesdale, which is like a a fat I shrimp. The Gaians are what the happens shrimp. when um, when vegans go too shrimp. far. That's probably Nomad fighter. Not the what? That, I was gonna say the Gaians are what happen happens when vegans go too far. The Gaians. You're just, eco, you're just they're eco terrorists. You're just shooting at everyone now. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I you're like you're like you can't consider me racist when I hate everyone equally. <laughs> Pretty much exactly that. I'm racist much. against the human race. <laughs> I'm not uh, racist or sexist. I just hate you all. Here's the thing. I'm gonna go on to try to make my own YouTube career, and somebody's gonna come by and be like, cancel him for all the shit he said on the podcast. <laughs> and you're gonna be like, here's my secret cap. I don't actually give a shit. Uh, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna keep making whatever I make. Whatever. I don't care. I do not care what your people's opinions are. There are people out there who will like me for sticking to my guns, and they're the ones that matter. And the rest they're, of you can fuck off. I don't. They're care. gonna. I, that's not the opinion of the rest of the people in this podcast. That's my opinion. <laughs> they're they're gonna come at you like uh, I'm about to end this man's whole career, and then you're gonna be like, psych Uno like re passing. Uno Reverse." My opinion is, if you are so easily swayed that you would unsubscribe and just like totally leave someone because he said something mildly offensive to some per some group of people in a video in your group of people like, even 10 years ago then you're not worth keeping around frankly that's my opinion you 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 have oh, no, no worth. Dave. You you can't express your opinion though. Like we're in a post opinion society. Oh my god, we're in a post joke society. <laughs> we're we're in a post post joke society. We're in a post. <laughs> we're we're society. starting to get to that point. We're in a post post joke society. Uh, we're starting to flip around to the other side of the coin, and because now everyone talks about being based instead of being conscious of everyone's feelings. I thought you were based, but you were actually cringe. It do be like that. It do be like that. Uh, but I did. Well, the Gaian's backstory is basically they they think a lot of this, a lot of the terraforming is just pretty much ruining planets that naturally shouldn't be the way they are. Oh no! Capitalism is coming in and destroying the environment. Who would have thought? <laughs> I'm literally no one in all of in all of space cares except them. Um, I don't even remember all of the all of the factors. Dave, <laughs> Dave, what? I uh, I decided for old times' sake to go on the old mod DB page for freelancer, and just oh, see what mods oh. exist. I found one. <laughs> I found one called Monkey. I found one called Monkey Lancer. Monkey Lancer. It just turns yeah, so everybody yeah, into. The, here's here's the description TV. of the mod. Simple, funny mod that replacing every character except Trent to Monkey. Enjoy new experience in storyline. Get your hands off me, you damn dirty ape! It's Planet <laughs> of the Apes. They do be like that though. Planet, oh, Planet, Planet of the Apes, but it's just poorly translated by Google. <laughs> <laughs> Planets of the Apes. In fact, there are more than one. Anyway, so we're about hitting that two hour mark. I was gonna say yeah. I don't think there's much more to talk about. Yeah. Though. There's uh there's not about there's not a whole lot more to say. Like I said, it was it was it's it's been an experience trying to stretch this game into two hours because 
it's there would be enough content, but it, there really it, isn't. It, it's it's a good game, but it's a game, and it's not that long. <laughs> It's yeah. not like trying to distill all of Final Fantasy. We'll have yeah. to come back. This to is that why. This is why you we didn't really hear us did shouting not. so much about we're so off topic. We did it a couple times, but I was trying to fill time, so whatever. It is what it is. Yeah, I'll I'll have a hell of a time editing this though. Oh yeah. <laughs> How do you want B roll yeah, every this? time that I pissed off a particular group of people? I've gotten to the point literally in editing where like someone will say something and rather than like cut it out and like throw another clip over it, I'll just record because I can I realize I can do that. I can record directly from my microphone a new thing over the audio of the podcast. So like Zeta will say something and I'll and I'll 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 cut that part out and edit over it and just say like Zeta, that's fucking disgusting. Why would you say that? Um, <laughs> I can tell you what I'm referring to, but not what Big we're saying. Bottom girls that make the rockin' world go round. Not, not what. Well, that's fine. Not what. Well, not what we're recording. I won't repeat it. But yeah. So anyway, this has been the tutorial on Freelancer. Uh, if you're interested at all in the game Freelancer, you should definitely go look into it. Check it out. It was, and still is, a very, very good space combat game. If yeah. nothing else, yeah, that's for sure. I mean, the story's, uh, the story's not bad. I mean, we didn't... The fucking interactions you have with NPCs are uh, god-awful. We didn't talk They're about horrendous. It. But they um, there are like three or four... I'm thinking of... There's, I think it's... There's No Man's Sky. There's another one. I think it's called Everspace. Yeah. No Man's Sky, Everspace, and... There's another one, but I'm forgetting the name of it. Like All Eve Online took their or something. Combat system from Freelancer. It's a good combat uh, system. Almost perfectly copy pasted into these other games. Mm -hmm. um, just so we're clear, No Man's Sky's space combat system, combat on the ground's a whole nother thing. I, I really no, we're I talking about in, in for their space combat to the ground combat. Their ground count combat in No Man's Sky is janky. Yeah, it's ass because it didn't come from something that was already so brilliantly. But executed. we can talk about that when we talk about No Man's Sky. In yes, No Man's Sky. Sky. Jesus Christ, In No Man's Sky. You can name your, you can name your fish whatever you want. Oh Thin God, no. Why? Why would you name? No, that? don't call it that. You're <laughs> vicariously involving me in your tomfoolery. <laughs> yeah, you anyway. you can call that panther looking thing over there. Uh, oh god, it's car spreading. Carcass cat. <laughs> no, no, I'm people are going to, to come to this planet and see it, and they'll and they'll start naming their like, own things nice. something stupid. It totally looks exactly like what you described. Him. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, what an this episode. Has been, uh, this has been the tutorial on Freelancer. If you learn how to be an entrepreneur from this episode, how? Yeah. Yeah. How? <laughs> here's what you should, here's what you learned. You learned get four idiots in a room together and talk and you mint. Yeah. And it's just mostly Dave talking and the rest of us being quiet. <laughs> I do feel like that. I really, really do want everyone else to talk, but then no one. When I stop talking, it just gets silent. I mean, I didn't have a whole lot to say about Freelancer. It was I don't I don't have bushels to say about Freelancer. It was a good game. I liked it. Yeah. Anyway, everybody say goodbye now. Goodbye now. Bye bye. Bye bye. Goodbye. I'm blue. Dabba dee dabba doo. Uh, it's Baba dee dabba die. We out. Yeah.